morning, it's Lee Halliday, and what we're going to cover today is an introduction to the XState library that will allow us to build finite state machines, and then we'll see how to integrate that into a React app. We'll start with a very simple state machine, which will be the toggle machine. So we'll basically toggle between two states, active and inactive. Um, in future videos, I'll be covering more complicated things such as data fetching, controlling a video player, but let's start simple to just cover the basics. So we'll define here a toggle machine variable, and it will be an instance of a machine. This is a very cool visualization tool um, for XState that allows you to see what the state machine does and how it transitions from one state to the next. We'll give it an ID, and we can just give it a name of uh, toggle machine, same as the variable I created. And then we need to tell it what state is the initial one when you first spin up this new machine. So initial, and we'll start it off with inactive. Next, we want to define all of the states that this machine has. And that's why we're where it gets its name finite state machine, because it has a finite number of states that it can toggle between. So we'll say states, it's an object, and we'll add properties to it, which are all the different states this machine can have. So we'll have one that's inactive, and then the other one, which is active like this. So as soon as I click update now, I can see the visualization of this machine. So when it starts, it's in an inactive state. And then we have an active state over here, but we haven't yet to find a way for it to toggle or change between inactive to active and then back to inactive. So the way you do that is you basically tell it which, um, which events it should listen for. And you do that by defining an on property. So the inactive state will listen to an event called toggle. And when the toggle event happens, we can give it some instructions of what to do when it receives this. So if we're in it, if we're in the inactive state and we've received the toggle event, we're going to want it to switch to the active state. So if I update this visualization, I can now see that as I send it the toggle event, it will change the state to active. But we need a way to toggle back to the inactive state. So what we can simply do is come to the active state and define the same event listener here. Oops, inactive. So the toggle event. So when the active state receives toggle, it will switch back to the inactive state. So if I click update again, I can now see that the loop has been completed. We start in inactive, we toggle the active, we toggle back to inactive, and it just keeps doing this loop forever. So now that we have our machine working, let's copy and paste this and bring it over to our React app. So right now I've got an app component which is just rendering a div. Not too much else is going on, but I have included two libraries. So I've included xState, which is sort of the core library for using this but also xState slash React, which gives us a nice hook to be able to inject this machine into our React component. So if I define our toggle machine here, the next step is to inject it into our app using the use machine hook. So what we'll do is we'll say const um, empty array, and it will be equal to use machine, and we give it the machine that we want to use, so this is the toggle machine. Like so. Okay, next up is what does this give us back in return? So it gives us back two things. It gives us back what we'll call current and another thing called send. So what are these two things? Current is basically the current state of the machine at any point. So this includes um, what state is currently active and that's available on the value property. So we'll see to access that in a second. And then we get a function called send that allows us to send events to the state machine. So the toggle event here, which allows it to toggle back and forth between inactive and active. So why don't we add a button that allows us to send the toggle event? So we'll have a button, and it will just say toggle. And let's just make sure this is rendering. Cool, so we've got toggle, it does nothing so far. And We'll add an onClick event, and what should happen when this onClick happens is that we want to send the toggle event to our state machine. 
this. So nothing visually is happening yet. And even in the console, nothing's happening. So why don't we just console.log current so we can see what we're receiving. So when we first launch this, we can see that our state machine has a value of inactive. And that's again because we said that here that initial is inactive. But as I click toggle, it re-renders with a new state of active, toggles back to inactive, etc. So what we could do, I mean, we could simply output the current um, value here on the screen. So it's inactive and it's flipping back and forth. But um, X state comes with, um, it's basically an easy way to, to determine which is the current state on your machine. And we can do that sort of like an if statement. So we'll say current, um, what's this called again? It's called matches. So if the current um, state of our machine matches active, we can say we are active. And because we only have two, we could sort of assume that the opposite would be inactive. But just to have a little bit different, why don't we have two separate statements for each one? I guess I don't need these quotes anymore. So it's inactive. It's active, it's inactive again. So we could just add another one here where when it matches inactive, we are inactive here. And now it's switching back and forth. So what we've done is we've defined a state machine that has two states, inactive and active. And both of these states listen for the toggle event, which toggles it to active or inactive depending which one we're currently on. Um, we've tied this into React using the use machine hook, which gives us back um, a variable called current, which is sort of a whole bunch of information about the state machine as it currently is. And one of the things we get with that is a function called matches that allows us to check what's the current value of the state machine. We also get a function called send that allows us to send events to our state machine. Um, and then when it listens for those, it will automatically re-render um, once it switches to a new state. So that's an intro to X state. Uh, stay tuned and subscribe if you're interested in continuing. We'll look at how we can handle more complicated um, finite state machines where we're loading data. Maybe there's more data to load, maybe there isn't, maybe it fails. And we'll also look at how to control a video player. Hope you enjoyed this video. Take care. Bye.